something today that sort of addressed the theme of the day, obviously, from theory to reality. And we realized that we actually deal with theory quite a lot in our business, and that's the theory of animal training. <clears throat> and animal training, when we think about it, a lot of times we have a certain image. Maybe we picture a, an old school image of a lion tamer or an elephant trainer at the circus or at a zoo. Um, but animal training is a discipline rich in theory, and that theory is always evolving. And it's been an evolution for us, and that's what we'd like to talk about today. And when you know a little bit about the theory of animal training, it can help you a lot in your everyday life and with people as well. So we're going to dive on into that. Great. All right. So very first, right off the bat, uh, what is animal training? Uh, it's not as complicated as people think. Actually, it's much, much more simple. Animal training really is anything that we do that modifies the behavior of any animal. So pretty simple thing. Keep that in mind as we keep talking. Anything we do that modifies the behavior of another animal, a human animal or otherwise. Cool? All right. Uh, so I've got a little quiz for you guys. Uh, let me know maybe by show of hands. First one, uh, is it training when an owner asks their dog to sit? Show of hands if you think yes. Hopefully a lot of you. Is that animal training? Yeah, sure it is. Of course, it's a training situation. How about this one? Is it training when a parent gives in and lets kids have ice cream even when they did not finish their broccoli? Is that training? Yeah, maybe not great <laughs> training, but it is. Of course it is. Next one. How about this? Uh, is it training when somebody rolls their eyes because their best friend had yet another worst date ever? Is that training? It totally is. So yeah, th these are all training situations. So animal training is not just, you know, sitting down in front of your dog and asking the dog for a paw, but it's lots of different things. So uh, we can train all kinds of animals. I bet you didn't know that you could train goldfish. You really can. Actually, this image, it comes from a kit you can buy online. It comes with all the props, the little hoop, the little net, uh, and very detailed instructions about how to train your goldfish uh, using something called positive reinforcement. How cool is that? Who knew you could train goldfish, of course, uh, parrots and humans? Really, it's as easy as A, B, C. Doesn't get any easier than that. The first one, the A. Uh, this word maybe some of you haven't heard before, but it's a really good one. Uh, an antecedent is the thing that happens before the behavior. So we could say the antecedent is a stimulus that causes the behavior to happen. That's the A, antecedent. B, the B is the actual behavior. So antecedent causes the behavior, A causes B, and C is the consequence, and that's the thing that comes after the behavior. Sounds very simple, right? Everybody try to remember this. This is gonna come in handier later on. A, B, C, easy as A, B, C. All right, well now that you have the basics and you're all expert animal trainers, of course, after two minutes of instruction, uh, we'll just go through a few quick lessons. And these lessons apply to the animals that you may be training, but they apply to the people you may be training as well. So keep those ABCs in mind and we'll just have a look through here. So lesson number one, positive reinforcement works better than punishment. And this is a big part of the evolution of animal training over the last few decades, is we've moved entirely away from punishment in all of its forms towards positive reinforcement. So let's consider a situation. Imagine uh, that you were about to, as you maybe do sometimes, call your grandparents. Very important thing as a grandchild, if you have grandparents, you should probably call them sometimes. This can go one of two ways. So imagine you call your grandparents and your grandmother picks up the phone and this is what you get. You get grumpy grandma, and some of us have grumpy grandmas. And she, when she hears your voice, instantly begins to chastise you, to, to scold you about not calling, and you never call, and I never hear from you, and I don't know what my grandson is doing. You need to call more, and you get the, the ninth degree about never calling your grandmother. How do you feel about that conversation? Has this happened to any of you before? Does anybody have this relationship with their enough. grandmother? Call me more yeah. Often. yeah, so I see shaking heads from those with their hands up. This, is not a positive conversation. This is your grandmother punishing you for never calling her. Is that gonna make you call more? No, it's gonna make you call less, actually. It's gonna have the opposite effect. So imagine then, instead of your grandmother, you get your grandfather this time, and he's very excited to hear your voice, and he tells you how excited he is and how great it is to hear you, and he wants to hear about your life. This is a very different situation and it's gonna make you call more. And this sounds really, really easy, but it's amazing how many of us in our everyday do the first one. We scold, we punish, and punishment creates a negative relationship. It's not a happy, trusting relationship, and the animal that's being trained will often avoid the trainer altogether 
but positive reinforcement creates a positive relationship and a nice feedback loop because they praise you for calling, you call more, they praise you for calling, and it just goes round and round. It's perfect. So lesson number one, use positive reinforcement. Lesson number two, you only punish or reinforce the behavior that most recently occurred. This is a huge mistake that people make. Imagine another scenario. Imagine you are 12 years old and you get your report card and it has an F on it. Some of you may have experienced this, although I won't ask you to volunteer that information now. But you take that report card home and you hand it to your parents tentatively and they see the F and they're very upset as a parent might be, you know? They're unhappy that you have the F, they maybe scold you for not trying hard enough, they're angry that you didn't do well. And probably deep down it's not anger, but they're, you know, they want you to do well, but it manifests as that like, mm, you need to try harder. What behavior are they punishing? Are they punishing the F? Or are they punishing you showing them the report card? Very confusing, right? So if you're 12 years old and you hand your parents the report card and they get all angry, next time, maybe you won't give it to them doesn't mean you won't get an F. So you only punish that most recent behavior, and especially for an, an animal that's not maybe as smart as we are, they're not able to go all the way back to that behavior before they only know what they just did, and that's what you're punishing or rewarding. And lesson number three, a good trainer is always, always thinking about how their training will affect the behavior tomorrow. It's not about today, it's about tomorrow, because training is a process. And there's a great example for this as well, which you can see all the time if you go to one of our fine off-leash dog parks. You will see dogs running free with each other, playing around, having a good time, and you'll see some infuriated owner screaming at their dog to get it to come back. Why would the dog go back to that? <laughs> this makes no sense at all. This is not how you train an animal to do this. An animal is going to choose the most reinforcing thing, the thing that is the best. And so instead of yelling and screaming, you need to make coming back more rewarding. You need to make it the good thing. So when the animal finally does come back, even if it takes forever, if the animal comes back to you, you should praise it and give it treats because tomorrow it's going to remember that. So you need to reinforce, you need to uh, think about the behavior tomorrow and be more reinforcing than that thing. So with these simple lessons, I think you'll all be expert animal trainers. Great. All right, guys, so just to summarize these really quick lessons, um, remember the ABCs, the antecedent, the behavior, and the consequences. Uh, remember, positive reinforcement is a really good and useful tool, works better than punishment. Uh, you can only punish or reinforce the last thing that happened, so you can't really punish for something that's happened a long time ago. Most animals, and even humans, don't understand that. Uh, and of course, we always want to think about the behavior of tomorrow. Um, one final thought before we do a fun little demonstration with you um, is that everybody should try to remember that we're training all the time. It's kind of like a life in a fishbowl. That's what it's like, really, because every interaction we have with any animal is training, no matter what. Really, remember, everything that we do that changes the behavior of that creature is training. So think about this when you go home tonight and talk to your spouse or your friend or your housemate. Uh, think about it next time your grandma calls. Think about it maybe if you are working on training an animal. Maybe you got a new puppy or something like that. Uh, these tools are really, really helpful things, and they really can make a big difference in your own life. Now, we'd like to put it into practice just really quick here. Thank you so much, team. That's awesome. We believe that with these simple tools, plus on top of that, the fact that we've got a little bit of experience and the animals that we work with have become quite resilient because we do all sorts of great positive reinforcement and trust building, um, we believe that even you uh, could be really great and successful animal trainers. Now, is there anybody who is interested in volunteering for a quick exercise? Oh yeah, I saw you first, come on up. Cool, okay, thank you. you wanna Okay, so can I get your name? Steve. Steve. Okay, hi, Steve. Um, now, I do believe that Steve is a really great animal trainer. Do you have experience in animal training? Zero. Zero experience, my okay. My mom gave my dog away. Uh-oh, okay. Well, <laughs> his mom gave the dog away. Uh, well, we have a lot of trust and faith in our little buddy here, Apollo, and in Steve's experience, because your mom gave the dog away before you learned all of these things that you learned today, right? So now you're prepared to be an animal trainer, right? Feeling confident? Okay, awesome. Here is our little man, Apollo. I'd like you to come on over, actually, to this side, if you don't mind, Steve. And here I've got a simple target stick. It's literally a wooden dowel with some black electrical tape on the end. 
our little man Apollo here has learned some pretty cool tricks, um, tricks that some people might say are not really possible for a raptor like this tiny falcon, uh, because his brain is so teeny tiny, he's really not like a parrot at all. Uh, so these kinds of behaviors, things that he really wouldn't do in the wild, are pretty foreign to him. But again, through positive reinforcement, uh, through lots of great training, he's ready to go look at this little man. We're going to train him to touch this target stick. Okay. So if you could hold the stick. Now, he's got some experience with this behavior. All you need to do is take the stick. We're going to hold it in a place that he can reach easily from this perch. And we're going to say he's ready to go before. And all you've got to do is bring it to a position and say target. Target. <laughs> so let's start. Target. Nice job, buddy. Great. So let's try moving to a different space. So if you could move it maybe over somewhere here and try again. Target. You like target. That? Oh, I think he's caught up here. OK. Sorry, tiny man. Let's try again. Target. Good job, buddy. All right, you want to try the other side? Target. I don't know. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, see, like, this is what happens. He's, what he's happens like, before. oh, no, but you have to be persistent. Watch. Target. Good job, Mr. Uh, Steve, thank you very, very much. Um, so we can see through positive reinforcement by allowing the animal to get uh, reinforcement after each of these behaviors, the behavior only grows stronger. And really, anybody can train our tiny man here, Apollo, uh, to take some of this food um, for performing a special behavior. So uh, I'd like to just wrap it up really quickly by saying at Wild Ontario, we've had some really amazing successes, some very positive experiences transitioning to using this sort of new age style of training, even with birds who traditionally maybe would not have uh, been thought to take to this kind of work. Uh, we've had great success stories with a, a whole number of our animals, and actually, let's, let's bring them out for a quick parade. Some of you maybe didn't get a chance to meet them over the lunch break, so uh, we're going to bring them out here. Uh, thanks so much to everybody for hanging out and listening, and uh, thanks to Apollo for performing. Thanks very much to Steve, and uh, let's thank Einstein, our great horned owl, and uh, we'll bring out all of the others in just a second, guys. Please, if you take anything from this quick little talk here, please remember um, that positive reinforcement is an incredible, amazing tool. Try to use it maybe even a little bit more in your lives. Uh, don't forget about those very simple ABCs. And we really do hope and wish for you guys uh, all of the same types of training successes uh, when working with the animals in your life. Uh, we're Wild Ontario. Uh, thanks so much, everybody.